to piggyback on the last session, really. And the last session focused on uh, really consumer-driven accounts as they pertain to HSAs particularly. And we kind of ended on the note of, um, you know, kind of education. And there was a gentleman who I don't see, but I actually don't see anybody. So a, a gentleman here who was kind of asking that question. And uh, not to... Um, disagree with our esteemed panel, but I really think it is about employee engagement because there's so many layers in our current healthcare provided, um, you know, healthcare system, if you will, and it's not the healthcare system, it's really the payment mechanism system. And, um, you know, full disclosure, uh, in addition to my role as Chief Compliance Officer for WageWorks, I have also had the responsibility of lobbying, so I am a registered lobbyist. I'm one of those, um, and you can blame, blame me for that. Uh, but what we're going to talk about now really dovetails into that because WageWorks has just started to really mine the data that we have available to us to understand, um, in partnership with Visa, who has helped us to assemble this data, to really understand our portfolio, kind of what behaviors are we seeing, and how can we drive that behavior to where we want to see it to make these programs the most effective for us? And, and frankly, um, in the larger debate that, that we're all engaged in right now in this space, I think um, that really is the key, is how do we understand what the practice is, what the employees uh, or the covered individual's behavior is, so that we can drive tools to help them um, use things more effectively, and, and in doing so, clearly, uh, to make the business more profitable and uh, to meet our clients' needs more effectively. And so we're going to talk about kind of what was the objective, what was the methodology that we used, what assessment criteria we established, what results we obtained, what recommendations we drew from it, and I'm going to give you an example that, of course, is based on fictitious um, data, and you'll, you'll see that. So. Our objective, clearly, as one of the leading providers of consumer-directed accounts, um, WageWorks has more than a million and a half FSA accounts, um, and uh, we are in the full suite of HRA, HSA, uh, limited flex, flex, you know, some wellness accounts, a variety of, of alphabet soup accounts. And, and like others, we want to differentiate our, ourselves in the marketplace because margins are being squeezed and prices are, are you know, um, getting squeezed as well. And so how do we make ourselves different, number one? Number two, how do we come alongside our clients in a more consultative role and, um, and become kind of their go-to person about strategy and objectives they're trying to achieve in some of those things? Third, how do we establish the criteria for evaluating what makes a valuable and effective client? I mean, I think, um, you know, if, if all we did was serve retiree HRAs, and not to pick on that group, but, you know, boy, the call rate, the call contact rate, um, the lack of uh, automated internet savvy, tech savvy uh, generally would kill us if we didn't really understand the market and price it effectively. Identifying those most effective clients and then kind of steering the rest of our clients to become those most effective clients and, and developing the plans. You know, we often talk about improvement plans or action plans for maybe clients who might be dissatisfied with us or, or certain issues in the industry or with our vendor relationships, we might establish some corrective action plans. But do we really take a look at our portfolio of business and try and develop internal action plans to make those underperforming clients um, better, better and more effective clients for us. So the methodology that was used was to work with Visa to develop this portfolio analysis approach and a benchmarking model. And so combining both employer industry, employee claims data with Visa transaction data, we were able to analyze that data to identify key metrics that drive in this example, our FSA business specifically. Now you can do that, and we want to do it ultimately with every single segment of our portfolio. 
I'm establishing client profiles and segmenting our book of business into vertical markets was, is really helpful and helped us to look at behavior um, anomalies that we were seeing and look at it by that market segmentation, which is, is very curious and interesting as well. And then finally, along with the phenomenal marketing team and, and the, the power that we have in our vendors, and, and particularly in this case with Visa, uh, developing strategies by segment to guide priorities to communicate with specific clients, client profiles. And so, um, you know, I, I want to be real clear that we've only begun to scratch the surface. Like, this is really hot stuff. And to the extent that you are big enough, have a big enough portfolio to do it, and can really understand and mine the data, um, it's really powerful stuff. So let's dig in. First thing we did is we, we analyzed the business, a lot of different business metrics, and identified eight of them that we're going to talk about today because I have 30 minutes and probably 25 after 22, after the last group two. Um, but eight, eight different metrics that we wanted to talk about to establish these segments. First of all, kind of number of FSA accounts in play, year-over-year -year growth, account persistency. So to the extent that someone re-enrolls in an account year after year, their election amount, how they use that amount, what's their visa transaction activity, visa spend activity, and paper claims activity. Those metrics were the ones that we wanted to look at first. So we found some really interesting stuff out of this. So based on the different metrics and kind of groupings and the industry segmentation, we were able to kind of identify, um, you know, real cutesy terms, but I'll describe them, okay? Um, the combination of those performance metrics and kind of the, the patterns that we saw, we were able to segment the group into veterans. These are people that have a high persistency rate, smaller election amounts, very high usage of the plan, but they also submit very large paper claims. They might be shoeboxers, if you will. 